See, here I am, fiddling with my leash. Are we recording? Woo, here we are! Guys, I've got Hank, and this is a question that's come up a lot recently. Um, people are struggling a little bit with collar conditioning because dogs are having slightly averse reactions to vibrate. And that initial introduction, they either avoid it or they try and avoid the training session altogether. And I said, as soon as we get a dog that looks similarly to this, we'll try and shoot a video. So here we go, we have Hank. Now, when you start off your session, this is gonna be my recommendation. First of all, get yourself in a controlled environment. Now, I happen to have this really nice 30 by 60 pin with basically nothing in it. Um, this is what we're gonna be using for him. And we're going to start off by trying to build some, um, build some momentum by doing a few treat and positive based reps, and then we will move right into starting some collar conditioning work. Hey, 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 come on. I have a check cord on him because this was already started this morning, and I said, whoa, 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 we wanna video this. So I'm prepared with my check cord to be able to help with this, and this is what I'm gonna recommend that you guys do if your dog is having a strange reaction. So to start with, I've got a couple Soft train me treats. If you check out on our website, we have under the store tab, it says recommended items. This one's listed there. So you can see the specific ones that we're using for training. I'll get him back over here, Hank. So we're gonna do our targeting game. Now Hank has a little bit of lack of focus, which isn't the end of the world. It will get better the longer that we get time to work with him. Hey, 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 come on. Just keep that, I wanna point that out because I, I tried to explain this to somebody the other day and I'm throwing treats all over the place now. Um, a you light need, tug. You need a little treat pouch. I, I've got a Jessica, she's standing right over there. Um, a light tug, not a, a full on constant pressure reel in. All I did was, hey, 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 and started tugging on that leash, and he's like, what, what? And then you've got his attention back. It's all we're looking to do is redirect that focus away from whatever was distracting him. So, Hank, we've got our clicker ready and a target. Good boy. Now you can see a tail wag a little bit. Hi, hi, hi. All right. Those are supposed to be easy to eat, Hank. Good. You can see some variable reinforcement there. He got two reps and then, and two clicks and one reward. Hank, here, good. This is showing an understanding in this controlled environment that he's got a pretty good idea of targeting and feeling comfortable coming to us for reward. Hey, here, ah, ah, ah. Hank, 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 Hank. He says, come on, good. He says, where's my treat? Good, this is another example um, that can explain how variable reinforcement works and how to tell if you're trying to do too much with your pup. He seems like he's pretty even keel, pretty low um, overall desire to do this task right now, but that's gonna be a dog that we need to be keeping those rewards coming on a more consistent basis. You don't wanna to get too, um, people ask how often should I be rewarding and versus clicking? But with him, right now it looks like it needs to be more of a every single time game. Bird, hey, 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 hey. Hey, hey, hey. Hey, 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 come on. Okay, Hank, come on. Hank, 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 Hank. Are you interested in that or no? Yeah, he said I could eat. Okay, so he's demonstrated that he's got a, a good understanding of what's going on, but he's at the point where he doesn't really care to listen. He doesn't care to try. He's just like, meh, I'm gonna go over here and do this. So this is where collar conditioning can be helpful. We can build a good understanding of 
how to turn off the collar, and we start that with vibrate, and it can redirect that focus. Just like this leash attached to him, if I give those light tugs and say, hey, 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 come on this way, he's gonna come over here. If he's distracted over there and I don't have a way to redirect his focus, he's gonna kinda do his thing. So we wanna be able to turn the e-collar into that way just to redirect focus. Now, come on. So I've got the vibrate on. Now you could instantly see that. His ears perked backwards, his tail dropped a little bit, and he went, whoa, what is that? And we were able to help him through. Now, in that specific situation, I had momentum moving my direction. I was using my own footwork to kind of keep him coming this way. And when he got to me, I touched him and the collar shut off. That all happened very quickly, but I wanted to explain what it looked like. Again, good. We'll let him mosey on, which may require me not to talk. Okay. Okay, so now I need an assistant. Jess, come hither. Good. So here, we're gonna utilize this rep. Now he's checking Jess out. Go ahead and stop right there. He's checking Jess out. I'm going to, I've got the leash here. I'm going to turn vibrate on. Hank, Hank, here, good. This dog already knows how to do this and maybe was weirded out for a second, but this is going to not really be all that beneficial. Okay, so he played a little trickery on us and made me think that he really had a better understanding than he did. As soon as we started, I was like, well, let's just go ahead and finish this session off. It's not really gonna show exactly what I was trying to show you guys. And then as soon as we turn the camera off, it's like, ah, yeah, this is gonna show exactly what I wanna show you guys. So um, we got pretty lucky with one rap coming to me and that was probably partially because of the momentum that I had built, but it's not at all an understanding of what's going on. So again here, I'm gonna turn the vibrate on. Good, and it's gonna shut off here. Now, Jess, go ahead and step out here a little bit so you can be seen. No hiding in the corner. Good, now this is something as well. We did like two, three reps between us, and this is something that you're gonna see a lot. Dogs start to anticipate who's going to call them. Come on. Um, and just start this like walking back and forth game or trotting back and forth game. And they're again, not actually responding to what you're asking. They're just anticipating and kind of guessing. So again, I'm gonna turn the collar on here. I've got this check cord. Hank, Hank, Hank. Good, here. Now, we start this behavior with targeting. Now targeting, come on, turn, 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 turn. Targeting is going to help to build a behavior with a puppy and give them something to follow and move and come toward. Once we get into this stage, um, we want to be able to show them more consistently, especially early, early on, that coming to us is what's shutting the collar off rather than just touching our hand. That becomes less important until, again, we've gone through the collar conditioning stage and they're getting much better at it. Then we can ask for some more specifics where, no, I'm not going to help reach for you anymore. You need to finish this one out on your own. But in this early stage, it's important for them to be able to understand the collar gets shut off by complying with what he's asking, which is for recall at this point in time. So we're gonna do a few reps, work back and forth. I have this check cord on him. And the reason I have the check cord on him is because we did one rep to begin with that was like, ah, he's trying to avoid, he's trying to get out of it. And that's gonna be where your dogs are gonna get into trouble or you're gonna get into trouble with this specific situation. So reinforcement based training is very, 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 very powerful. And when it's the dog's idea, it's even more powerful. So we hit that vibrate button, dog goes, I don't know what's going on. And you go, I don't know what's going on. So you go, okay, well, we're gonna shut that off. And then you try it two or three more times just to make sure that you saw what you saw. And now you have a dog that's figured out that by seeming overwhelmed or being overwhelmed by the collar is the way that they're actually gonna get out of it or shut it off. And then we have to actually fix that before we can then move forward. So yeah, I some, have- Sometimes they'll just freeze there. Sometimes they'll run 
into another room, depending on if you're doing this in the house, find yep. some place to avoid. Trying to hide. But anything other than actually doing what we're asking, if the caller shuts off for, then they learn, hey, I don't really have to listen. That's what I needed to do to shut that caller off. So we've got the check cord here. We're actually gonna pitch it back and forth if we have any issues, but just go ahead and watch here as we work through this. All right, Jess, go ahead and call him to you. Hey. Here's your avoidance. Good. As soon as she's got to him, the collar shuts off. Now we want it to be less of a reel in the dog, if at all possible, more of a tug, 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 and you kind of get to redirect that focus back your direction. But ultimately, we need to get the dog to us. So if there is a reel in effect, don't be afraid to use that. Good. So again, he's trying to go that way. I'm gonna hit the button, Hank. Good. Good, step to him just a little bit. Again, we're trying to help him to figure this out. Whoa. Hank, here. You can see complete avoidance. He's going to the camera. Tug, tug. Good. Now I want to point out exactly what happened there. She used her body to move backward and that helps from a spatial pressure standpoint as well as is a more inviting position. The dog is feeling that pressure released as you move away and they feel more comfortable to move toward you. So don't be afraid. We see this all the time. People just standing still and expecting the dog to move for healing or move to come to them. All of these things. Move your feet a little bit. That's why you've got them. You can walk around and that's going to help your dog a ton. So I'm actually gonna get him to start coming back this way. Go ahead and call him to you. Hey. Collar is on. Good boy, here. Much, much better. You can see how just in a very few number of reps, he's been able to make a lot of progress, understanding that the only way this is gonna shut off, which is vibrate, just like your cell phone does in your pocket, the only way it's gonna shut off is by complying with what we're asking at this point. I can't escape to the camera or the corner or avoid or go sniff things. I've just gotta pay attention. Hank, Hank, here, good. Now I also wanna point out, because people ask about this, you can hear I held my here, which is our cue, until I had a pretty good idea that he was coming this direction. I want that here to mean, come to me, not him here, Hank here, Hank here, Hank here, while he's ignoring and not doing what he's supposed to. So I got his attention, hey, 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 Hank, as soon as he turned, he was coming this direction, here, we finish that with that. Now, eventually, that's gonna turn into the cue of Hank here, and we should expect for him to be able to come all the way to us. We're not to that point in his training yet. Go ahead. Hank. Good, really good. Let's do another one back this way. Try and involve no uh, check cord with this. Hank, Hank here. Good, even my feet, step over a little bit. He was kind of fading to my right. He's been doing that almost every single time. Just helping, right now we're just helping. Hank, Hank, boy, here. Good, really good. Let's do one more rep, and then we're actually gonna call this his session. Hank, <laughs> Hank, here. Good job, buddy, nice job. All right, guys, we appreciate all of y'all for watching. Definitely continue to throw questions at us. If you're struggling, hey, if you're struggling with something with your dog, chances are there are a lot of other people struggling the same way, and we want to be able to help you. If this is your first time to the channel, make sure and hit that subscribe button below so you don't miss any of these upcoming videos. And I'm the guy with the pink gun. This is my assistant, Jess, and Cat the Dog Trainer behind the camera today. Thanks, everybody, for watching, and we will catch you next time. Mm -hmm.